people that I talk to, it's like it doesn't matter where I've been, and it really doesn't matter where I'm going as long as I'm a vessel for Christ Jesus uh, to portray His Word. So I just, I just, I'm glad to be here with you guys today. Uh, I'm just happy for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, now. You know, we have had a wonderful time already. The Lord has moved. Uh, God is blessed. So I'm not going to be before you long. Amen? You might still make breakfast, you know. <laughs> there might be time uh, um, shortly to, to, to get out of here and to actually make breakfast. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you what God has given me. It might not be wrapped up in a pretty presentation. It might not it, it might not look like the, tr the traditional... Um, uh, sermons, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you as God has poured into me. Um, and, and like Bishop said, I, I am a teacher um, and so I like to have participatory sermons. You know what I mean? I mean, I like for the congregation to be involved. Because if you invest, you get something out of it. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to be calling on you. And we're going uh, to enjoy Jesus, we're going to learn something about Jesus, and then we're going to rejoice and go out beyond these walls and do ministry. Amen? Amen. 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 So let us, let us, let us uh, um, uh, pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for what you have done and what you are doing, Lord Jesus. We thank you for those who are here today, Lord, to hear a word from you. Now, God, we ask that right now you, you humble me, you Move me out of the equation, God, that you'll use my lips to play and, and form the words that will be understood by your people, God. But we know that this, this location, Lord, has got a mighty move on it, Lord Jesus. And we just pray right now that something is imparted, Lord, that we might grow the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we're going to come today from the um, uh, book of James. Uh, you'll see me taking my glasses off quite a bit because uh, I've gotten that age where I haven't got the bottle over yet. <laughs> so, so I see better without them sometimes. <laughs> um, but we're going to go to James, uh, the first chapter. Amen. And the Lord has been dealing with me, um, he's been dealing with me in, in terms of, you know, trials and temptations. Because everybody has them, and sometimes people don't understand what they're actually dealing with when they go through them. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to start in uh, James, the first chapter, the first the fourth, uh, first to the fourth verse, and it reads, James, the servant of God. And the Lord Jesus, the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen. May God have that blessing to the, the reading of his word. Today we're going to talk about trials. We're going to talk about temptations. We're going to talk about, in one word, tests. Tests of life. And we're going to talk about overcoming. Um, and this won't take long. It's a very simple message. Uh, you know, we all have experienced a test of some sort. Uh, anybody who's been in school... They get tests on, on, on a regular basis. Uh, if you work in a, uh, a company, there's often a, a test that, that, that uh, is put before you to make sure that you can do your job. Um, we use tests to determine the level of understanding, the level of skill, or the level of performance. Very simple. It's an assessment. A test is just a tool that kind of gauges what, what you know and what you don't know. And oftentimes, when you have a prepared for the test, it really shows what you don't know. Amen? Amen. Um, like I said, before you can drive a car, before you can operate a forklift, there are certain 
proficiency test that you have to go through. When you pass that test, you are allowed the privileges of that certificate or the privileges of being able to do that, that, that thing. Um, you reap the benefits. Amen? Amen. Tests are never ending. Never ending. If you had a test when you were little, guess what? When you get old, you will have tests. You know? uh, they will follow you all the days of your life. But the tests, but the tests that that um, uh, that I'm talking about, they are actually to determine, you know, they determine your health, your wealth, and and in today's situation, we're going to be talking about it determines your level of spiritual relationship. That's good. That's good. All right. So there's a great benefit to to, to, to testing. Uh, right here in the fourth verse of James one, it says, "But let our patience have her perfect work, that we may." perfect the entire wanting nothing. We may be perfect in our entirety and wanting for nothing. That's a benefit, but it also is a directive. Because we understand that Jesus Christ is coming back for a perfect church. And if we haven't been perfected, then we may not have the, uh, the, the power to rise with him. Amen? Amen. Um, What's really interesting about the scripture is it, it, it almost seems counterintuitive when you think about it. It says, it says, count it joy. So it said, count it joy because I'm going to have a problem. Count it joy because I'm about to be tested. I'm about to be tempted. I'm about to, be, uh, I'm about to go through a trial. Um, be happy. I don't understand. So that's a, a, a counterintuitive reasoning, but what it is, what it's saying is that that when we are tested, we learn something about who we are. We learn something about um, our walk with Christ. We learn something about our relationship with Christ. And no matter what happens, it's all about the relationship with Christ. Amen? Amen. Um, every victory that we can achieve in our tests, our trials, our tribulations, every victory that we can achieve moves us a little closer to being Christ-like. And that's our ultimate goal, is it not? Yes, it is. Right? So one of the things that, that we, we, we must understand is that no matter what the trial, no matter how difficult it may seem, we still count it joy because we know if we overcome, we got a little more Jesus in us. Amen? That's right. That's right. Um, trials are designed to improve your status. Yeah. Say that, sir. Say that. I'm saying it again, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. That's good. Trials are designed to improve your status. Your test result characterizes your proficiency and it shows you, you. If nothing else we need Come today, on. Come on now. we know that if we get, if we go through a test, it shows me who I am at that time. Whether I fail or pass, we know, we know who we are. We know that there's something that we have to work on. Yes. Amen? Amen. Um, we've read the Bible. We know that the Bible is filled with, with tests. I mean, we got uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Yes. Uh, there's uh, um, 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 David in the uh, We deal with Shadrach, Meshach, and, and a bad Negro. That, you know, they actually stood, withstood the fiery furnace uh, in the midst of the fiery furnace. And I love that story because, you know, when you read it, you understand that that Jesus in the old Jesus is actually in the Old Testament. He's standing in the fire with these three uh, men of God, boys of God, all right, and not a hair of singed on them. Yet a fire burns up the men that throw them in the fire. Yes, sir. That's right. Now, if I have a test, all right, if I have a test, that's the kind of uh, overcoming I want to do. You know, in the midst of my test, I want to, you know, and as long as Jesus is with us, we're actually always going to be, uh, we're always going to overcome as long as we, we, we think about what it is that, that, that is being shown to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, so, in every disciple as well had their test. Paul, we saw Paul go from being a persecutor to being the, uh, 
the, the probably the most prolific writer in the Bible. That's yes, right. All right? Um, and it's because he had to go through some tests. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So it's clear that everybody has tests. Everybody is going to have to overcome those tests. Yeah. And when you overcome those tests, what happens? You get more Jesus in you. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. All right? Now, this, is, it's, this experience is clear to the believer. Uh -huh. All right? It's clear, yeah. All right? Non-believers have tests, but they are not for the perfected. And in many cases, non-believers don't pass the test because if a non-believer fails a test, it's just another walk in the park. You know, he's doing what the non-believer does. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. Um, so yeah, we 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 will we will grow in Christ as long as we understand that our tests are there. Our trials are there. Our tribulations are there to make us stronger in Him and to perfect us. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm almost finished. So, y'all got to bear with me? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, what I want to also share with you is that our trials reveal where we are in, in Christ. It, uh, it reveals our shortfalls. Christ is coming back for a church, amen? amen. Christ is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, amen? amen. So if, God, if Christ is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, then that means in our trials we have to perfect ourselves so we're without spot or wrinkle. When we fail a test, we add a wrinkle. All right? Now I don't want to discourage you because Jesus is still there with you. All right? You'll have an opportunity to, to, to uh, uh, address that test again. But what you have to do is you have to learn for every time you fail. You have to learn something. You have to go back to Christ, pray for forgiveness, and ask the Lord to give you strength to handle it the next time. Amen? That's good. Right? That's good. Because we're dealing with something that, that, that we don't talk about a lot. We're dealing with flesh. We're dealing with our sinful nature. The only way we can endure a test or be encountered by a test is that it has to approach our sinful man. Yes. Why is that? Uh -huh. We are attached to this world by our flesh. Yes. Our spirit man is not attached to this world. Amen. I'll show you in the Bible. When, when, when Adam was in the garden, Adam's goal was to please God. No matter what he did, he, 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 he pleased God, he communed with God every day. Right? It wasn't until Adam sinned that he was ashamed of showing himself to God. That's right, that's right. He had a strong relationship before sin, but because of the flesh mm -hmm. yielding, he deteriorated, he killed, or he uh, damaged his relationship with Christ, with, with, with God. That's right. Amen? Amen? Our flesh is always, always going to damage our relationship with God. Right. If we are pursuing uh, godly things in the flesh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Amen. Um, excuse me. Um, I'm sorry. Um, so, so if you understand that our flesh, thank you so much. So, if you understand that our flesh is our flesh is never going to heaven, right? Okay? If you have flesh, it will not leave this earth, right? There is no flesh in heaven. Where Jesus is, there is no flesh. No flesh. Right? It is spirit because we worship him in spirit and truth. The only way we can please God is in our spirit. Amen. So um, so if we are attached to this world of our flesh, it is our flesh that, that Satan can um, entice us with. Right? You cannot, for instance, you cannot entice me with certain things, right? I mean, I'm not a real vegetable eater. You can make a nice spread and put all the vegetables you want on there. And chances are, I'm probably not going to be the first in line to get it. But if you put a spread out there with cake, you put a spread out there with cookies, you know, I'm probably going to push somebody out of the way to get there. So, so if you are going to entice me, you can't do it with green beans. You can't do it with cauliflowers. You can't do it with collard greens. You have to do it with cheesecake. You have to do it with uh, carrot cake. You have to do it with donuts. You have to do it with anything that's got sugar in it. Right? Satan knows your weakness. He knows your flesh. The only link that you have in this earth 
The only thing that Satan can attack you with is he knows your flesh and he can attack you through your flesh. That's your trial. Your trial is going to be uh, linked to your flesh. So, if that's the case, how are we going to overcome these trials? Yeah. Well, let's talk about it. 